I had a request last year from a reenactor group to help them test and film the capabilities of the body armors they are making. They are in the process of replicating the 5 6th century lamellar armors of the Hunavar mounted warriors. These are only the first non authentic steps of the process, but they already knew that the armors they made can stop a 9mm Luger or a certain special round. Their first models are made of modern materials to study their structures. They use rolled stainless steel sheets of 2mm, which is of course very far from the original 5-6th century materials. The padding at the structure is not 100% authentic either. So don't forget, these armors represent only the first steps of their efforts in understanding the unseen armors. Therefore the durability test you see now cannot be considered experimental archaeology. We just destroy these armors to have some brief indication on the durability of the structure, and of course to have some fun. This type of lamellar armor was very popular in the Asian region, but they also appeared in Northern Europe. They are light, easy to make, so they suited well the mounted tactics of the nomad nations. We decided to make a fictional trip in military history to see what can different firearms do to this non-authentic design. We collected many black powder guns to choose from, with a wide range of ignition systems and calibers, testing both civilian and military guns, starting from the handgun, finishing with the percussion military rifle. We also replicated the possible historical loads. We used 2F Swiss powder loads with the bullet matching the gun. For the round ball guns we used the powder load weighing one third of the weight of the bullet, while for the military guns we replicated the standard service loads. And here are our handsome enemies waiting to be pierced with a wide range of bullets. Let's start the fun with the traditional Hun bow, similar to the ancient Hungarian bows. The draw weight is 54 pounds, enough for killing the enemy. The arrowheads we used are also traditional contemporary designs. No damage to our soldier, but the arrow suffered from the impact. All of them broke where the arrow had meets the shaft. Let's jump now into the age of firearms. The first handheld firearm was a simple handgun. This little ugly duckling fires a 53 caliber round ball without any patching or wedding. The muzzle velocity of the bullet was 180 meters per second, generating 240 joules of muzzle energy. It is not easy to aim with this gun, but this time the shot placement was perfect. The steel plate stopped the round ball that fell out from the leather padding. The soft lead bullet transferred the complete energy to the armor, so I'm sure that even if he survived, he had a very bad day. Let's see now the next step. The 45 caliber wheel lock pistol loaded with 40 grains of 2F powder and a patched 44 caliber round ball. The muzzle velocity of this setup is 310 meters per second, with 404 joules of muzzle energy. Even if the ball hit a part where only one layer of metal is present, it could easily stop it. The soldier survived again. Let's see now what happens if we fire the same caliber ball and the same powder load from a smooth, long musket barrel. The muzzle velocity will be 390 meters per second, with a muzzle energy of 640 joules.
Szép. The effect clearly shows that velocity is the key factor in this case. This load easily penetrated the double layer of metal, killing the soldier. Same load again, but fired from a Willock rifled carbine. Muzzle velocity is 350 meters per second. Energy is 514 joules. The impact was not sheer in this case, so the bending plates could catch the bullet. But again, even if it was stopped, the force of the hit probably injured the soldier. And now it's time to go for the military calibers. The 17 to 20 mm caliber range was the general military musket caliber in this region from the 16th to the 19th century. In our case, the 460 grain round ball left the bore of this musket with 390 meters per second with 2260 joules of energy. And this is the point where it is visible why the rapid evolution of the firearms made the armors useless. It was not necessary to look for the bullet. The military caliber ball easily penetrated the armor and the soldier as well. Although we knew that the modern conical bullet will penetrate the protection as well, we decided to finish the project just for fun. The weight of the Lorentz compression bullet is 28 grams and the muzzle velocity is 375 meters per second with 1970 joules of energy. This bullet also had a devastating effect with penetrating both the armor and the soldier. The Lorenz compression ball even took one of the metal plates into the wound. It is out of question that any metal armors were obsolete in the middle of the 19th century, when these rifles ruled the battlefields. Although I have to emphasize that this is a non-authentic copy of the Hun Avar Lameller armor, I'm sure that we collected some good information for our reenactors for making a perfect copy from authentic materials in the future. The strength and quality of the 2mm stainless steel plates is much better than the materials used in the 5th-6th century, so the original armors must be weaker than the ones we tested. But even if this small project cannot be considered a historical test, we surely had some fun at the range seeing some nice old guns in action.
The Reenactor team is now after making the 100% authentic copy using historically accurate material, structure, padding and design. If I'll have a chance to test the part of that armor as well, I'll surely film it for you.